think I read the worst book that I've read this year. There's 500 pages of me wanting to throw the book across the room and getting frustrated. When we found out what happened to his wife, I was so shocked. Hello, hello, welcome to the channel. I hope you're doing well. So for today's video, I've got my second half of my March reading wrap up. Now, if you kind of watch my videos quite often, then you'll know that since the beginning of the year, I've done like mid-month reading wrap ups because at the moment I have been reading a lot. Like on average, I've been reading about like 20 books per month. So I thought it'd be easier if I kind of split it into two halves within the month. So I do a reading wrap up for the first half of a month and then a reading wrap up for the second half of the month. So this is my second half of my March reading wrap up. Overall I read 22 books, I read 11 in the first half of March and then 11 in the second half of March. And overall I had such a good reading month, especially in my second half of March, I had some really good reads. And then I've also had a couple of stinkers, so I thought I'd kind of go into them. If this first time I've clicked on my videos interested in book content like this, I also film fashion content lifestyle content occasionally, vlog and all that type of thing, then please hit the subscribe button, like this video. And yeah, let's get you on to the video. I started off the month with reading The Next Life Duet by Britt Benson. Now, this is a duet that I kind of wanted to pick up for a while and I've kind of heard a few people talk about it, and it was on Kindle Limited, so I decided to read it. So the first one is The Love My Next Life and the second book is The Life and All the Rest. So these two books follows Mackin, is that his name? I don't know, it's like Mackin and Lennon. Now, they go to the same high school. Mackin was pushed behind a year. In the first book, Mackin is 19 and then Lennon is 17, nearly 18, and it's set scene year in high school. Lennon is best friends with Macklin's sister and she is very much of like a people pleaser. She doesn't like saying like no to people and stuff and Macklin has always kind of like tormented her a little bit. Not like too much, not like compared to like some bully romances but he has kind of tormented her a little bit and they really don't like each other but at the same time they have this like understanding with each other and kind of get each other. Macklin, he He's quite a troubled guy. He's a very troubled guy. He's struggling with like a drug addiction. He's struggling with mental health and stuff. And he is very much of a like self sabotager. And it is the romance. So the first book you get is kind of like a back and forth between them. And it is hella toxic. If you want to go into like a romance book and want something cute and fun, then these are definitely not it. Because I saw Larry Reese do her March Reading wrap up and she talked about the first book and she gave it one star. She hated it. Now, Personally for me, I love a bit of angst and tension and a bit of toxicity in my books, like I really do. So it's definitely one of those books that you either love or hate it. Now I gave it four star. I really enjoyed it. I gave both of them four star, the first one and the second book. It does also have like a forbidden aspect, which I don't want to say what it is because it gives spoilers for what happens kind of during the first book. But it is very much of like a back and forth between the characters and in the first book is very much of Mac and struggling and kind of Lennon trying to like save him but then also kind of losing herself and then we go into the next book this one does end up on a cliffhanger the second book is set years later and it's actually Macken who he is sober he's recovering and all this and he is trying to build his life but then Lennon she is the one who's struggling and she's the one going through things and it's always like right person wrong time for them and it's kind of it's nowhere near as toxic in the second book but there's a lot of like heavy topics that I've talked about in the second book so definitely look for trigger warnings for these books but I just overall had such a good time I read these books in like a day because they were just so entertaining to read and personally for me the characters are not going to be the most likable characters they're not like you're going to get frustrated about them but then at the same time I feel like people are going to find them quite realistic as well and I just overall really love these books and I personally would recommend them but it's definitely one of those books that you will love them or hate them. After I finished those books, I went into Powerless and Reckless. Now, I have recently filmed a video of like carrying on slash finishing all the series that I'm in the middle of, and these books are in that vlog. So if you want to know like my full on thoughts, then you can watch that vlog. But I started with Powerless. This is the third book in the Chestnut Spring series. This one is the longest, I believe. And this one follows Jasper and Salone. So Salone is cousins with the Eaton brothers, who are the guys in the first and second book. Jasper is like a brother to them. Bo, who is the guy in the fifth book, which I still have to read, Hopeless, which I've heard very mixed things about. He brought Jasper in when he was younger because Jasper's been through a lot in his past and he was kind of like abandoned by his family. You kind of learn about that. He is kind of more of like a tortured hero, I'd definitely say. And Sloane and Jasper, they've been best friends since they were younger. And Jasper and Sloane, they just have that like understanding between them. Sloane has always been in love with Jasper but because Jasper's like five years old and when they became friends when she was 10 and he was 15, it'd be weird if he had feelings for her. So in this book, I think Sloane's like 28 and 
Jasper's like 33 or around those ages and that's where he finally realizes that he has feelings for her but Sloane's always been in love with Jasper like he, she always has since she was a child and at the beginning of this book she's actually engaged to someone else it's a very like loveless engagement it's for like financial reasons and stuff and she finds out that her fiance is cheating on her and is like this is an escape that I need and Jasper bails her out the wedding and then they kind of go on road trips and stuff and lines are blurred before going into this book I had very much low expectations because I've heard very mixed things about this book I get 4.25 stars I loved it I love Jasper I love Sloane I love their connection together and the understand that they have with each other I thought Jasper was such a great MMC like he's so sweet how he talks about Sloane is just so like just beautiful when you read it I just really really loved it there's like a third act situation but it doesn't technically lead to a third act breakup I love seeing the previous characters even though in this book it very much goes into like the road trip and a lot less time spent on the ranch I still love and seeing the previous characters and overall love this one and then when I finished that because I loved it I had to go straight into Reckless which is the book that I've been like most interested in because it's Theo and Winter's story and there was like one interaction between the characters and I was already obsessed with them like if you know that scene in Powerless from Sloane's point of view that we've got a Theo and Winter but then we also got it in Theo's point of view in this then you'll know what I mean and I was like I need to read this book now this book has one of the tropes that I really don't like and it's accident of pregnancy however Elsa Silver wrote Accident of Pregnancy very, very well. So Winter is Summer's sister from the first book and she's kind of a little bit of like seen as like the villain and she's very much of a misunderstood FMC. Now at the beginning of this book, she is gonna get a divorce with her husband. You kind of learn a lot about her husband who is a horrible guy. She ends up going to Summer's house but on the way there, she feels like someone's following her but that ends up being Theo but he's not actually following her. They have one interaction between each other where she just finds Theo annoying but then she also finds him attractive and they spend more time together and then they end up having this one night sign it's like one night that's it but then of course she gets pregnant and I don't want to say anything else like I don't want to say what happens after that just read the book even though it's it's early on in the book I feel like it will still give spoilers so I'm not going to say anything else but like Powerless I love this book I get 4.25 stars I love Theo Silva I understand the hype with him how he like always offended Winter and always just saw Winter for who she was and loved her for who she was made me love him more. I love Winter, she's such a strong female character. She's icy but then she'll also protect everyone around her and I just loved their co-parenting relationship and when they got together you could just see the love between them and I overall loved it. So I only have one book left which I do need to read Hopeless because I want to read her new series when that comes out on the 9th of April which is wild love it's called wild love i think it is so i want to get to them but these books i just i really do love them because after flawless was a very shaky start and i really did not like that book heartless powerless and reckless have been so good reads for me so if you're like me you didn't like flawless but then you don't know if you want to carry a whole series i recommend these and then i think i read the worst book that i've read this year no joke i picked up the broken vows by katarina mora this is the fourth book in the windsor series now I love The Wrong Bride. I love that book so much. But then the rest of these books just haven't, just hasn't done it, haven't done it for me. They just, they just haven't been my cup of tea personally. This one is about Zane and Celeste. And this is a arranged marriage, of course, because every single book, oh, I can't even know, sorry about that. Every single book in this series is an arranged marriage. And it's also like a second chance situation where Zane and Celeste, they knew each other growing up. Their families are business rivals. And Zane practically like bullied Celeste growing up. But then he also liked her, which doesn't make any sense. And then Celeste goes to London for university years later. They're like, they're both 23. And Zayn is just like, I want you. And Celeste is like, what? You've treated my like shit. Like, why do you want me? Is this like, is this like a game to you type of thing? And it goes from there. And then she just kind of instantly is like, oh, well, I'll give you a chance. Things happen between them. And then something happens for them not to talk for five years, for them to break up years later. The family decides to kind of do something for financial reasons for them to be in arranged marriage and then they have to get back together. I hated this book. That was the whole plot of this. Like that was the whole plot of this book. But I really did not like this book. I gave it a two star. I didn't like the characters. I thought they communicated horribly. They didn't have any trust. The reason why they broke up pissed me off. And 
oh god i just really didn't like it it was 500 pages of me wanting to throw the book across the room and getting frustrated i really didn't like it and then i went into still beating by jennifer hartman now this book i've seen so many amazing reviews about i read another book by jennifer hartman which was lotus i personally really enjoyed that book and then going into this book i had very high expectations because i've heard so many amazing things about this from literally everyone i kind of went into this book thinking it was going to be like a 4.5 five star read for me now this one is about cora and dean now dean is actually engaged to cora's sister and they've grown up like hating each other having this kind of rivalry they both end up getting kidnapped by this man who was a horrible man the first kind of like third of this book is them being kidnapped and then the rest of this book is them trying to adjust to real life and the trauma that they went through i definitely say when going into this book do look at trigger warnings it does have the trigger warnings at the start which i very much appreciate because some authors don't put trigger warnings which i think is not right at all. They end up getting kidnapped as I said and a lot of things happen when they're getting kidnapped and it is kind of like a trauma bonding situation because they've both been through the same thing. When they end up running away getting out of that situation they both find it hard to adjust to new life but then they also see each other completely different than before because they share this trauma and no one else gets it than each other and they kind of rely on each other and this book I gave a 3.75 stars. I enjoyed it. I read it in a day. I could not put this book down. My problem with this book was I just constantly felt bad for the sister. Like I did. I did. I don't know what it was. Like I was rooting, for, I was trying to root for them so much for Cora and Dean. And you could tell like there was like past tense where they obviously liked each other, but then they didn't realize themselves. But I did feel sorry for the sister because I don't know. And it was just because when. Dean was still with Cora's sister it was obviously liked each other and I was just like just break up with her break it off especially because they were like engaged and they've been together for 15 years but what I will say about this book is Jennifer Hartman's writing is just so beautiful and the mental health representation is amazing so that's why I'd say definitely look at trigger warnings but I did really like, I did really like them together like I feel like they are soulmate but then I still was kind of felt bad for her because I do but then she also said a couple of things that I was like what you say type of thing so I did just end up still really enjoying it 3.75 stars is still like a good rating for me I don't know if it's just because my expectations were so high that when I read it it let me down a little bit but I still really really liked it then I did actually start a new series that I've heard nobody talk about but I found it on Kindle Limited and I was like okay that sounds good so I picked up the first two books in the Kings of Blackwater series so we have the first book which is Alone in Darkness and then we have the second book which is Inescapable Darkness. These books are kind of set at this academy for people who are trained to be like hitmen so every single book in the series follows a different brother in this hunter family so three of them are biological brothers and then the other brother is the cousin but everyone thinks that they're actually like all brothers. So the first one follows Eli and Raina, I think. I think her name's Raina. Yeah, Eli and Raina. So Eli is the oldest. So you kind of, the age that you go to this academy is like 20 to 22. It's like three year. So in, I believe in this one, they're like, he's like 21, 22. He, he's a bit of a psychopath, I got to admit. And Raina, she doesn't go to this academy. Her family didn't want her to go to this academy, but then her brother gets beaten up by Eli and his brothers. And she decides to enroll herself in this university to try to get the Hunter brothers' attention away from her brother and onto her. So like in the beginning of this book, he, she literally keys his car and writes small dick energy in his car, which I thought was quite cool. Eli and her, his brothers just kind of start like tormenting her but then she just said like nothing you're gonna do is gonna scare me because I'm a little bit messed up as well type of thing. Now this book I really enjoyed. I gave it two weeks five star. I thought it was just such a fun read. Definitely look at trigger warnings for this because it is a dark romance. But I love the girl. I love the FMC in this book right now. I thought she was such a strong female character. I love how both characters were a little bit like psychopathic and they just kind of worked together. They did. Then I went to the second book, which I can't remember what it's called. Is it Inescapable? Yeah, Inescapable Darkness. So this was about Rico, who is the cousin, and his parents were murdered. But the night that his parents were murdered, he was supposed to get murdered as well. But the FMC in this book, Isabella, was on the mission to kill him. But then she ended up not killing him. Two other people killed his parents, but she had a gun to his head, was going to kill him, and they decided against it. Years later, she has run away from this organisation that she's in because they know that he's alive. 
and she ends up going to Blackwater Academy. Now, that's the only place that she feels like she's going to escape, but she doesn't realise that Rico is there as well. She puts like different colour contacts in, she changes the colour of her hair, but then the opening scene, there's like a water scene and then her contacts like dissolve and Rico bumps into her, sees her eyes and is like, you're her. And she's like, nope, that's not me. I don't know who you're talking about. And kind of throughout this whole book, she's trying to convince him that it's not her, but then he kind of always knows it's her. Now, this one I really enjoyed. I gave it four star, even though it was kind of like a back and forth kind of situation. I loved Isabella and I loved Rico and I loved them together. Out of the books that I've read so far, I'm currently in the middle of third one. They have the most wholesome relationship and it's a lot less toxic. Now, what I loved about Rico and Isabella together is that both of them are literally the same person. They both lived a lie with their life and tried to be someone else where they've kind of forced to be someone else. And I just really, really loved them together. I thought they had such a wholesome relationship. And I just thought it was very sweet. And I gave it four stars. And then I went into Sweet Temptation by Cora Riley. Now, I got this book secondhand off World of Books. I love good age romance, so I picked this one up. This one follows, I don't know how you say your name. Is it like Gilio, Gilio? Someone's gonna really hate me for how I say her name. I don't know how you say her name. And Cassio. Cassio's wife died. Now, we don't know anything that went on with her death. It's very much like a secret until you learn about it later on in the book. And Cassio has two kids, both very, very young. He's in this mafia world and because he works all the time, he needs a wife to kind of look after his kids when he's kind of working and stuff. Now, in this like mafia world, all of them are like arranged marriages. Now, I haven't read any other books in this universe and there's like a reading order, but this one is one of them that is like an optional type of thing. So even though Luca, who is like one of the most like popular core writer characters who I've heard about, is in this book a lot, you don't have to read the other books to get into this one because it is a standalone. Gulia, Gailia, Gulia, I don't even know how you say it. I'm so sorry, I think it's Italian. She is 18, but literally the day after her 18th birthday, they are in like an arranged marriage. It is quite a big age gap. I think she's like 18, he's like 31. Now this book, I gave it three point five stars. I enjoyed it, but her being like just turned 18, it did weird me out a little bit, I got to admit, especially because she has to literally become like a stepmom and bring up his kids as well, like help bring up his kids. And like, she has to go straight into this like stepmother role. But I did really like the FMC in this book. I think she was a very strong FMC. She literally became mother to his kids. And Cassio, I liked him. He had good character development. What I will say is, when we found out what happened to his wife, I was so shocked. Just saying, when you kind of go into this, he gets married a few months after his wife's death, but him and his wife, it, the marriage wasn't what you think. So that's all I will say. But I enjoyed it. I had a fun time. I thought it was fun. It's very quick read. It's like less than 300 pages. Um, it's just like a solid age gap romance for me personally. And then I went into Rope the Moon by Ava Hunter. Now this book is the second book in the Runaway Ranch series. I read the first one which is like Tame the Heart, which I did enjoy. This one is about Dakota and Davis. Now Dakota and Davis, they had something in the past where it was kind of like a secret relationship for a year, but then she goes ahead and like travels the world and owns her own bakery and stuff and he kind of lets her go. He wants to stay and work on the ranch. He knows that she kind of wants to escape this small town. Now, Dakota ends up being in an abusive marriage and she ends up escaping her abusive marriage and going back to her hometown. But at this point, she is pregnant. So it is like a pregnancy romance, but Davis is not the father. This book was so good. I love this book. I said a four star, but I actually think it's 4.25 star because I'm still thinking about it. You know what, I'm gonna say 4.25 star because I still think about this book and I really, really loved it. Davis becomes Dakota's bodyguard and kind of looks out for her, especially because she's pregnant and she knows that her ex-husband is gonna come for her. So he becomes her bodyguard and really just looks after her. And I love this book. The little things that Davis did for Dakota were so, so, so sweet. Like the littlest things. You could see the chemistry between them. You could see the love between them. And it's still kind of like a slow burn in a way, but then you also have no third breakup. There's no third breakup whatsoever. Even though it's not like a very much a slow burn, it's still a slow burn, but they're together for like the last 50% of the book, but there's literally no third breakup whatsoever. I'm so excited for the rest of the books. I love like the farm family setting. I love the sibling relationship between the brothers as well. Like I love that in books. And this series so far has been really, really good as well. Like if you want 
Go to Small Town Romances, sat on a ranch with very like protective MMCs who would do anything for the girl, then I very much recommend this one. I'm so excited for the next book as well. I don't want to see who the couple is, but it's a couple that I've kind of wanted from the first book, which when their book comes out, prepare to be sick of me because I'm very excited. But this one was just a very good small time romance and I definitely recommend it. And I've seen literally all positive reviews on this book and I'm not surprised because it was just so good. The final book that I read in March was The Dare by Hartley LaRue. This is like a prologue to the Losers duet by her. Now I've heard really good things about the Losers duet and I honestly just did not know what to read for the last day and it was the end of March and this was like a 100 page book and I was like let's just pick it up. Now this one is literally like sorry, it's 100 pages, it's a novella and I definitely say if you want to get into all these duets this is very important to read. I haven't started the Lucy duet yet. I was actually going to read it but then it's not even on Kindle Limited. It's not on Kindle Limited, I have to pay like four quid so I'm going to just wait until I buy the physical books hopefully if I can find them second hand off all the books. This book follows Jessica and I don't know his name, Manson, yeah there we go. So this follows Jessica and Manson and Jessica when she was in high school, she was this very much of like a mean girl. She was like in the cheating squad and all this. And she kind of like helped to torment Maxon, Manson, Manson. Constantly gonna get his name wrong. Manson and his friends. This whole novella is set one night at a house party. Jessica and Manson end up doing like beer pong. And they end up having this dare that if Jessica loses, she has to like obey everything that he says for the rest of the night type thing. If that makes any sense. But there is like great consent in this book as well so it's like consensual non-consent that you can say no whenever you want and but she never does because she also finds this like very like attractive like it's kind of kinky it very much is it kind of goes into that um there is a group scene as well there is like a whole set of trigger warnings at the start of the book as well and it's kind of going to end up being i think it is reverse harem and it's m m f m m i might be wrong with that or is it m f it might be m f m m m Oh, I think it might be M M F M M M. I really don't know, but I think this is just like a good start. I don't want to really say anything else because I definitely say going to this book blind, but I said look at trigger warnings. But I just had a fun time. It was just set one night, and it was spicy, and it was just an enjoyable time. And I really want to get into the Lucy duet as well because uh, there's some really good things. I feel like Jessica and Manson are like the main characters, but then you have like the three other guys as well who are involved, and it's going to be like group scenes and all that type of thing that you usually get a first hair room so I've never read a first hair room in my life never read one so I think this might be a good place to start I also want to read the it's called like the Madison Kate series by Kate James I want to read that as well so we will see but this one I gave through a bit five star I thought it was enjoyable and I'll probably read the Lucy Dreads this month or next month, probably one of them. So it's all the books that I read in the second half of March. I really hope you did enjoy. Let me know in the comments down below your favourite reads from March. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe and like this video and I'll see you guys in a brand new video. Bye!